my ship is inoperative, but I've managed to hire a smuggler to help you out. He'll be... Oh, I see we're in position. Good luck! The Outer Worlds is a classic case of a video game squandering its potential. It's a generic role-playing game that works very well when it knows what it's supposed to be doing, but at other times it simply doesn't know whether to take itself seriously or continuously poke you with satirical content. It's not a big surprise that The Outer Worlds derives a few things from Bethesda's Fallout series. And like those games, the story begins with you waking from cryosleep and getting to meet a completely weird scientist, Phineas Wells. The establishment is now being being ruled by big corporations and capitalism is the name of the game. And apparently our crazy scientist isn't really happy with how it's all going. He wants to incite a revolution so that the colonies of humanity in this different galaxy can be freed from the clutches of the overseeing organization, the board. The premise is pretty uninteresting and as you progress through the game you will likely not even care about the bigger picture. After all, it's just about shaking up the universe and getting help from the various colonies. So the story's nothing to write home Home about, but what about the worlds themselves? Undoubtedly, the world design and the art accompanying them are easily the strongest points of the game. There is an excellent variety in the kind of areas you'll explore. Each location has multiple colonies that players can traverse, and although they aren't as big as, say, Fallout 4, their compact size makes them easy to navigate. Much praise has to be showered on the game's choice of color palette as well. As mentioned earlier, each colony is designed uniquely, but what sets them apart from each other is the way all of them have their own individual identity, thanks to some stellar color choice and the characters that reside within them. The Outer Worlds truly excels in delivering a colorful and wide array of both serious and downright crazy folks, whom you'll remember for a very long time. However, even though the NPCs can have interesting things to say to you, the dialogue options that the game provides to the player can often feel too lightweight. Consider this interesting case. I had to access a bloke's office which had pivotal information about a story thread in the game. Obviously, I can't just smash the office's door and get what I need. What the game does in this case is, simply put, stupid. I just need to visit the person who's looking after the bloke's office, select the appropriate option, and the poor guy will simply hand me over the keys. This is despite the fact that he's supposed to not let anyone access the office. And what does the game do? It allows a complete stranger with guns to have access to the office without any sort of consequence. Sequences. sequences like this can be termed as funny or satirical in the sense that people can be dumb at times. But this particular set piece wasn't even funny. It was downright unrealistic and absolutely jarring. In short, although the quality of dialogue can be great, the actual choice and consequence mechanic behind it can be hilariously stupid at times. Much has been said about the game's role-playing mechanics and progression system. However, on closer inspection, it feels very much similar to what we had in Fallout 4 except with a couple of differences that I'll talk about in a bit. The skill system is divided into a number of main categories like melee, ranged, defense, dialogue, stealth, and others. However, they also have sub-skills. So the main skill category, say dialogue, is divided into persuasion, lie, and intimidate. Ideally, each subcategory should also be allowed to have its own individual leveling up mechanic. However, the Outer Worlds does things a bit differently by leveling all three sub-skills with a single skill point, at least until you reach level 50 for each of them. So if you want to upgrade dialogue, you simply invest one skill point and it will level up persuasion, lie, and intimidate subskills as well. I found this system to be quite weird as it defeats the purpose of having a subskill category to begin with, at least until you reach level 50 for each of them. However, there are two factors that separate this skill system from others, and it's the game's ability to adapt accordingly to your playstyle and allocate you a flaw perk. For example, if you are wary of robots, the game will give you the option to accept except robot phobia and weakened stats when coming up against robots, but in return you'll get a free perk point. It's an interesting system that improves the mediocre skill system somewhat, and adds a bit of emergence in gameplay. The second differentiating factor is that you can also allocate perks to your companions, and the more you have of them, the more engaging of a metagame it becomes. 
Handling your companion's various parameters and accordingly seeing the results on the field can be quite satisfying, especially seeing them perform a powerful super move on a difficult foe. As you level up, you'll also earn perks. There's nothing special about them, as I found them to be your typical run-of-the-mill attributes related to character progression, such as increasing the base health or increasing the walking speed. Initially, these perks won't affect your character much, but as you progress through the game, some of the higher-tiered ones will give you the ability to become pretty powerful during the later sections of the game, and powerful you will need to be, as enemies can be rather daunting later on in the Outer Worlds. Although lacking in variety, monsters and enemy characters come with different skills depending on the planet you landed on, and can be quite intimidating. Unfortunately, the AI accompanying them can be inconsistent at times. Sometimes enemies and monsters will just stand there and shoot at you without any sort of strategy, thereby giving you a clear shot at them. This brings me to the combat, which like the rest of the game is yet another mixed bag. Let me get this right out of the way. You'll be coming across a ton of weapons and loot in this game. You'll have access to saber swords, scythes, electronic plasma guns, machine guns, rifles, and a ton of other mods which you can use to improve your weapons, or you can just break down your weapons to get additional components for repairing your gear. This all sounds pretty great, right? Unfortunately, the guns don't feel tight. Granted, I'm not expecting a classic first-person shooter experience. But barring the stunning visual effects that come with each shot, guns don't really handle well. There's a sense of unrealistic weight to them, which makes them inconsistent to handle. The game also employs a VATS-like system called Tactical Time Dilation, which allows you to slow down time and reveal enemies' critical points. Unfortunately, it doesn't feel as powerful as the VATS system, primarily because it doesn't give players too much critical information about the enemies. Although seeing enemies react to your shots in slow motion while you wallop them is certainly a sight to behold. The UI and inventory system is fine, it's nothing special, but at the very least it gets the job done. Items can be easily arranged and thrown out, so yes, it's not terrible like a few other RPGs have. Quest design is largely the same as Fallout 4 as well, except that some missions may take place across different planets. This is still largely a point A to point B mission kind of a game. You will be accessing indoor environments and fighting outlaws, robots, and monsters monsters, and traverse the open world and take on random encounters. Like any other role-playing game, the critical path is defined by its storytelling, and given that's largely a mixed bag, the quality of the quests also come off as inconsistent. They can be anything from mediocre to great, and this also remains true for the side missions. The Outer Worlds isn't a big-budget video game, so I was totally not expecting high-end state-of-the-art visuals. I played the game on PC, and I found the graphics to be serviceable at best, even at maxed-out settings. Character animations and facial modeling ranged from terrible to mediocre. Lighting quality was mixed, and there was a ton of pop-in during several sequences. Unfortunately, I also ran into performance issues where there were frame rate drops all of a sudden. Suffice to say, The Outer Worlds won't be winning any awards for its graphics anytime soon. To conclude, I'll repeat what I mentioned right at the beginning. The Outer Worlds is a classic case of a missed opportunity. There are so many things it does right, and so many others that feel unrealistic or simply don't feel balanced. If you thought this would hold you over while the Fallout 76 drama goes on, I'm afraid it won't. Yes, it doesn't have any microtransactions, but I'm not going to praise a game for doing something it's supposed to do. Look elsewhere if you're looking for an excellent choice and consequence based role-playing game. I'm sure there are plenty out there. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, please hit the subscribe button. Also, don't forget to switch on the notifications bell icon next to it. That way you'll never miss any of our videos. Thanks for watching.